What's up, everybody? Welcome to the final review of the 2022 preseason, the Amy Community Series matchup between the Blues and the Melbourne Footy Club. It was a good night out for the Baggers. <laughs> I'm going to try really hard not to get too excited, but it was definitely um, it was definitely a good night last night. Uh, saw a lot of what we needed to see. I left there feeling pretty satisfied. Um, I think a lot of us were pretty satisfied with that based on based on the reaction in the fan cams and um, and based on the sentiment. Uh, I think I had a bit of everything. I had um, plenty of positives, plenty to work on, but ultimately it seemed to cap off a solid enough preseason. And you know, hopefully it's enough to you know start the AFL season strongly and, and get that match up against the Tigers over the line. Um, for me, on the day I. We'll take you back to earlier in the day. I actually went and checked out the the Carlton Reserves matchup against the Casey Demons. And I went there for two reasons, to be honest with you. I went there to see Doc play, to see how he was moving and to see how far away he seemed in my eyes. And I went there to watch Paddy Dow. I went there to see what was going on. Um, he didn't play in the ones last week, obviously not named in the ones last night. And it kind of got me thinking like, what is happening? I wanted to see it with my own eyes. Now... Maybe we can talk about Dow a little later, maybe on the Monday show or, or whatnot. But Sam Doherty, story of the day, story of the year so far. 38 disposals, he was everywhere, looked pretty sharp. I mean, you can only get better from there. Does he come straight into the round one side? We'll discuss that. But it was really heartwarming to see him out there. And there's no doubt that when he plays his first game back in the ones, the emotional gravity of him being back in will 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 resonate there and i'm pretty bullish about him playing in round one if i'm honest after seeing that i'm very mindful of putting too much expectation on him but he looked pretty good so that was solid now they got romped and apart from sam doherty there was nothing else to take out of that that match in my lens um but we go to last night and i you know again what i I said this last week like what, what do you look for in a match like last night well I was pretty keen to see how our system matched up against the best system in the AFL, being the Melbourne Footy Club. And I was really keen to see us be tested. I wanted to see them bring that sharp, ballistic ball movement that they displayed against North Melbourne last week and that they displayed in that third quarter of that grand final in 2021. And I wanted our defensive structure to be tested. I loved that Weedering didn't play. You look at the team sheet, you see Oscar McDonald, you see Lewis Young, you see Mitch McGovern, brand new players into this system, and you're thinking, okay, wow, we're really going to be under a test here. We know that Melbourne's smaller forwards always give us match-up nightmares. We know that if we turn the ball over in that corridor especially, they're just going to punish us. So I was pretty keen to see that. And then the forward line, I was pretty keen to see how the two small forwards worked again and if they were able to continue on from what looked really sharp last week and I think it was pretty evident early that we've got something good going there with with Durden and um, and Matt Owies. Uh, now, the wing position as well as we started, set a field, Lockie O'Brien, that seems to be what we're doing. That's going to be the, um, the matchups or that's going to be the positioning of those wings as the season begins. They did it again, looked pretty solid. I thought Lockie O'Brien picked up Picked up where he left off last week and, and continued his, his work rate. Um, now, the first, I'd probably say the first seven to eight minutes, Melbourne were very impressive. And the speed of the ball movement from the Melbourne Footy Club was frightening. And I'm thinking, oh shit, like we're, we are in for a long night. But ultimately, that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted them to bring their best. But to be honest, we, we seem to hold our nerve. Now, we... There's, there's a specific way that we are moving the ball from defense to offense. And it's basically using the corridor kick from, let's say, the back flank into center half back, right down the middle to give us options on the left and the right. It's very clear that that's how we want to start our scoring chains and either use Saad or use Williams with the handball and run. So we're really looking for that corridor. Um, Melbourne's first goal was, like I said, pretty scary the way they moved the ball. We, we seemed to turn it over. Um, McGovern with that first kick in. I like the fact that he was kicking the ball in from, from fullback. I think he's got a beautiful kick on him. Um, but I did like that we kept going with it. I think the Blues in the past, even last year, 
we try that corridor kick, doesn't work. The crowd gets on everyone's back. You hear the groans and then they go into their shells. But we seem to really keep persisting with it, which was, was good to see. Durden's pressure set up uh, Zach Williams' handball to Kennedy for his first goal. I thought Adam Saad's first quarter was pretty good. It's two really strong tackles. Um, and I noticed, again, that intensity. You know, we've heard about wanting to be a powerful team and play a powerful brand. And, you know, everything starts at the contest and the actions matched up with those words last night. Uh, I really did enjoy the start. Um, I thought uh, Corey Durden's first quarter was, was, was exceptional. Kicked the two. I didn't realize that he hurt his calf until, the, you know, after the game, which was shattering because that first quarter with he and Owies, the way they were the way they were sprinting and, and chasing and tackling and it might be a little unfair to single the two of them out because I thought across the board the pressure was there. Um, the midfield, you know, Chera, Hewitt, Cripps, Kennedy was very impressive. Very impressive the way that they spread, the way that they um, plugged holes. And so, yeah, I, I was pretty satisfied with that. Second quarter, pretty much more of the same. Uh, uh, it, was, it was the story of our intensity at the contest for me. That's, that was the overarching thing that I noticed. We really wanted to make a statement, whether it was to the competition or whether it was just to ourselves, that this is how we're going to play. You know, it's, it's clearly a different style. There's just this, there's an application. Before I go on with the second quarter, I will make note of a little moment that I noticed at the end of the first. So I was sitting on the wing, level one, right next to the Carlton bench. And at the end of the first quarter, our coaching group come onto the field to prepare for the quarter time huddle and whatnot. So as they're walking, you see this, this group of just men. And I mean like real thick, powerful men. You know, you got Vossi, powerful you know, next to him is, is Greavesy. He's he's huge. He's tall. He's thick. He's muscly. He's big. He's strong. Behind him, Aaron Hamill, another real thick, uh, powerful looking man. And then behind him is, is um, Ash Hansen, who's like tall, not as thick as the others, but he's definitely got some presence. And I noticed it straight away. And it's a little thing. It really is a little thing. Yeah, you know, four grown men walk past me, big deal. But just the presence of the group seemed to really just take me back a little bit. And I looked at it and I've seen the coaching group from last year and the way they were look, they were walking past and just didn't have that same aura. Now, maybe it's because it's preseason and it's a new group and we haven't had any shortcomings or not too many shortcomings this year and haven't been, you know, we haven't lost. That's the reality. So maybe it was a bit of that, but I just, it just took me aback and I sort of, I double, had a double take and noticed, noticed them. So I liked that moment. I like that moment a lot. Second quarter, Cripps' goal was fascinating. He was sharp. He looked he looked super. He looked like he was in super condition. Um, there was a passage of play which I loved to see. And it was a Lockie O'Brien. He thought his way through the situation and he switched it to setter field. It was just a beautiful kick. It really was. And then I think at the end of that second quarter, I started looking at, at Matt Kennedy. I mean, he's, he's, he's marking ability. We know it's been there and we've played him as a half forward because of it. By half time, we've kicked 10 goals, three. And I'm turning and having conversations with everyone. And the sentiment was, why the fuck haven't we been playing him in the midfield? And obviously there's all of that. But he, for me, was, was like best on ground at half time, maybe even for the game. Giving votes for this game would be impossible. I don't think anyone, everyone's going to agree. But... It was just impressive. And I had a chat with Caden McDonald at halftime and he was sort of saying, gee, you guys look really good. And I was, I was calm. I was subdued. I wasn't getting too carried away, but I was happy. I was happy to see our system and whatever we're trying to do look good enough against the reigning premiers. And yes, you can say that you know, they didn't get out of first gear, but they, they, they were trying to win. They were definitely trying to win. And I think... That became pretty evident in that second half. Now, we made a bunch of subs in the second half. Harry came off. Jack Silvani came off. Corey Durden, as we know, came off. I believe I'm missing one as well. But there were quite a few subs. You look at the forward line. No Harry. No Charlie. No Jack Silvani. You've got Luke Parks there. Willow was there. I think Plowman even went there in the fourth quarter. And it was just totally different. And it was a good test. And I liked what I saw. I liked what I saw from the standpoint of we know that going forward, 
it's just going to be tough to score because we've got <laughs> three defenders playing as forwards. And so it was going to be a real test of how can we manage the game? That's really what I took out from the second half. Now, the Ds came back at it. Uh, one of the comments on the fan cams, I think it was Jad, he made a good point that, you know, the Ds got on a four goal run. Um, but the difference was rather than the four goals being in a, you know, seven or eight minute patch, it seemed to stretch out amongst the quarter. You know, we seemed to control the ball a little bit better with improvements to come. There's definitely improvements to come. And I sort of, I didn't fall asleep in the third, but I sort of took the foot off the pedal in terms of my focus and attention in the game. It was just more about management. I was just hoping for no injuries. I think we had shown what we needed to show in the first half in terms of what can this group do? What does it look like when they're all playing as one? And I think we saw that. The fourth quarter, the D started to get on top. And the big question was, all right, well, it's it's a two-goal game or a three-goal game. How are we going to control this situation? Because I think in the past, we would just continue to bomb it long and, and lose our heads a little bit. No weedering out there to give us that assuredness down back and move the ball you know, cleanly. No dock down there as well. It was a very inexperienced back line, not only from a games point of view, but also from a games together point of view. You know, Like I said before, McGovern, McDonald, Lewis Young. So I thought they held their own pretty well. Um, there was a moment, I think Cripps, he took on Luke Jackson uh, as the game started turning into the D's favor. And I sort of made a note to myself, like that's, that's, oh, that's 2021 Crips. We don't need that. He got a little bit excited, um, but he's in such good nick. And fucking fair enough, mate. When you are that powerful, you got that much confidence in your body, you're willing to take on anyone. And that's how I took that situation. But uh, he, was, he, was, he was on something last night, Krupa. He, he looked good. Um, there was a nice passage of play. It was Lockie Plowman to Willow to Fisher for a goal, which stemmed the bleeding. Um, the TDK chase down was another important moment for me in that fourth quarter, which showed and resonated with their application last night. You know, it's the fourth quarter. Yeah, we don't want to get any injuries. Jaden Hunt takes on Tom DeConing on the wing. Tom DeConing sprints, lunges at him, chases him down, pins him, holding the ball. You know, effort indicators and, and, and application. Again, I keep repeating the words, but it just kept resonating with me that they wanted to prove a point that it was different. Um, Fisher pins another player with seven at the 17 minute mark. Uh, the D's charged home to finish the game. I really was hoping, I think in the first half, I wasn't too worried about winning the game. However, when the D's came back, I was really keen to win the game. I didn't want to lose the game. And I think it's a little thing, just little bits of confidence. It's um, it's important. And, you know, we win the game. And it is what it is. We win by, what was it? Just just under a goal. It was 15 goals, 8, 98 to 14 goals, 9, 93. Um, I use the analogy of laying the brick. Did we lay a brick for the foundations last night? I think so. I think our preseason wraps up now. Pretty happy with that. We've got two weeks until round one. And let me tell you, we're absolutely beating Richmond. We're absolutely beating Richmond. If we bring that application, we've got Weedering to come back. We've got Charlie to come back. Harry will come back. He played a, played a half last night. Um, Walsh will eventually come back as well. Doc will come back as well. Whether it's round one or not remains to be seen. But I left there feeling good feeling good. Positives, things to work on, not getting over the top. I think we all know where we're at. I think we all know what they're capable of when they apply themselves as a unit. We saw that in the first half. I think we also all know the inconsistencies in the group. And we saw a little bit of that in the second half. But I wonder if that second half happens, Have you know, had we had you know all our key players there. And I think the other thing I will take from that game, and I don't want to sour the performance because it was solid, but a lot of things went right for us. A lot of the 50 meter penalties went our way. Um, I think there were eight of them for the game, which was remarkable. So there is that as well. And I don't want to get too carried away. We'll play the demons in round 22 and we'll see how we're going. But I, you know, they're going to be, they're going to be really good this year. There's no doubt about that. And you can just tell they've got another gear to go and they've got nothing to prove. Whereas we do. And that was pretty evident last night. So I'm happy with that. I'm not even going to try and give like a best on ground. It was take your pick. It was Cripps, Kennedy, 
um, McGovern, um, Hewitt, no, McGovern, Mitch McGovern. And I think, I think it was, um, Joseph Adama was probably best on ground last night. Now that man right there has kept a firm lid on it. So for him to react the way he did, I'm going to call it early. That is fan cam of the year. That is fan cam of the year for 2022. Haven't played a match yet and he's calling it. Um, but no, that was exciting. It was good to see everyone happy and just with a smile on their face. And it was good to you know be back at the footy. So let me know what you thought about the game. Let me know what you have thought about our preseason and our preparation. I'm going to do a, a full Carlton season preview next week. I wanted to make sure I saw the two practice matches before I put in my best 22 and, and all of that. And we'll chat about it some more then. But in terms of last night, we'll chat about that in the comments. Let me know what you thought. And as always, go the Mighty Blues. Hey!